am Julie Blair, and we're here again today for another segment of Living in Forgiveness. And as we begin today, we're going to get into why or what does it mean to forgive the past. And before I get started, as I always will say in every single episode, I stand for Israel, and I'm asking you to stand with me too. Now, you know, last week I talked about why we need to forgive the past and why it's so important in order for us to continue forward. And today I want to get into reasons why or reasons what it means to forgive the past. What does it mean to forgive the past? We talk a lot about forgiveness and I've shared with you how we need to prepare our minds to forgive and the steps involved that it's a choice. Every single thing we do starts up here. And so whatever you allow to come into your mind is what will rule you. Are you ruled by the Word of God or, by, or are you ruled by the world? It's your choice. And when we look at the past, we all have one. There's no single thing that we all don't have in common in that we all have a past. None of us can say we don't. Whether it's good or not or a little, eh, we all still have one. So what does it mean to forgive the past? We can say it's one thing to do it, forgive, forgive. If you don't forgive, the Lord won't forgive you. And so we could hear these verses, and maybe this is you, where you sat in a church for 20 years hearing the same thing, forgive, forgive, but you don't really know what it means, and you don't know what it looks like on the other side of it. Well, when we look at forgiving the past and what it means, the first thing is that it's a choice to forgive, regardless of what it is you're forgiving. If you're forgiving yourself, it's a choice. If you're forgiving God for allowing you to go through some of the things that you've gone through, that too is a choice. Are you making the choice to forgive others? That is a choice. So when we take a look at forgiving the past, it is first getting to a place of recognizing that we need to make the choice to forgive. Now we know that within the past, the past is one thing, right? It's one full component of a series, a combination of experiences and events that took place. Now, this is where it might get a little bit tricky. You can say, well, I forgave the past, but if you're still bringing bits and parts and pieces of it with you, you didn't. It's kind of like when you vacuum and you say you vacuumed, but yet there's little Klingons all over that are still left. You still have those that you have to go back and pick up. When you don't forgive in full, there will be little things that are hanging around, and we don't want that because any open doorway is an open doorway, and the enemy will take any opportunity that he can to kill, steal, and destroy. And so the biggest weapon you have right here is the Word of God, but also your ability to forgive. So when you make the choice to forgive and you forgive your past for the individual pieces and parts and experiences of it and people and you and all of those things, and you forgive the past as a whole, what does that mean? Well, the first thing it means is that you're able to leave it alone, period. You've left it alone. Now, I want to share with you some examples of how we may think we've done so and then we recognize, well, not really all the way in full. I want to take you to Genesis 45, 24. So 45, 24. And this is, this is where when we're getting into this, this is where Joseph has met his brothers and now they are recognizing who he is, that he, he isn't the little brother that they did all those mean things to. And it's quite a fascinating story if you've never read it, but there's so much in this story. But for this, I only want to focus on one verse, and it's 45, 24 in the book of Genesis. Then he sent his brothers away, and as they were leaving, he said to them, don't quarrel on the way. Now, what's interesting is that they just had this great reuniting, and now the brothers are, are going back to Canaan, and they, I believe that's where they're going back to. And so, back to Egypt, they're leaving where they're at. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make sure I don't mess any of this up because I'm on my one little track here. So his brothers are departing company from him. And here's here's the thing is that he's already foreseeing, 
why else would he say don't quarrel? Mm. So when we're looking at this, he wouldn't say it if there wasn't a reason for it to be said. So here you have all these brothers that are probably just in shock as to what exactly it was that happened. And now they're reunited with their brother and they're leaving and they get a warning. Don't quarrel. Hold tight to that. Because then I want to take you to Genesis 50, 17 through, or 15 through 17. So it's Genesis 50, 15 through 17. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, What if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we did to him? So, that's the first part of this. Now, why would they be thinking that? We have in one place where he's telling them, don't quarrel. So they're giving a warning, let it go. Let it go. What's past is in the past, and it's past. And this is where we're at now, a new day, a new time, a new season, a new you, a new you me, or a new me, a new reuniting, a new future. Don't quarrel. It's done. But here, the brothers are bringing up the past here, right? When they're saying, what if Joseph holds a grudge against us for what we did? But see, then we continue reading. So they sent word to Joseph saying, your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive your sins of your servants of God, of your father. When their message came to him, he wept. So when we're looking at that, the past is the past. But when we don't leave it where it's at, it creeps in. And these brothers are a prime example of this. They misjudged Joseph. We can clearly see that. And so what did they bring with them? Well, the fear, what if he changes his mind? What if this is all far? What if, what if, what if, what if, and the next thing you know, they got to they gotta go find some meds because they got all this turmoil in their head instead of getting their head right and saying, oh, it's done. I need to leave it there. He already has given us warning. It's already been done. But yet they're pulling up stuff from the past to bring forward. So how often are you doing that? Looking to the past for your future. Oh, I dated this guy and I dated this guy and I dated this guy and all men are jerks. No, just the ones you go out with. Oh, all, oh, all women are gold diggers. No, just the ones you choose. So break the pattern. Stop your past. Stop bringing your future into your past and you won't have these issues. When you forgive and you leave it there, you're able to go forward. And this is where, until you get this revelation, it's going to be real hard to go forward because all this stuff is going to keep creeping in. And who has time for that? When we look at the patterns and the ways of how we lived before, that was then. Imagine if if God only dealt with you as though you were born again yesterday, and maybe you've been walking, walking with him for 20 years and praying in tongues every day, and you've been doing all these things, but he's still treating you like you were just born yesterday. There would be, there would be a difference in that relationship. But as you grow, you change. Expectations change. You grow more in him. He grows more in you, and you're not who you once were. When you choose to forgive your past, you're not bringing the thoughts, the ways, the actions, behaviors, attitudes with you into your future because no longer are those ways going to serve you for where you are going. And that leads me to the second thing that occurs and what it means when we forgive the past. We need to be remembering it no more. Why? Well, because it's done. We can go back here where Joseph had to reassure his brothers that the past was the past. He had to reassure them because they were trying to bring it into the future. They were still remembering it. They were still attached to it. Now, you see, one of the things that I know that I've shared this before with you is that when I made the choice to forgive my, my biological mother for all the things that she did to me and my uh, adoptive parents and all the, all the people that, that had done wrong to me, what I started noticing was that my, it wasn't that I forgot because people say forgive and forget. You'll never remember it. Well, that's not true, 
because if you don't remember it, where's your testimony? If, if I forgot everything that the Lord has done for me to bring me to a place of sitting with you today, then um, why are we sitting here? I don't know. I would have forgotten. So that doesn't, even, that doesn't even make sense. But what I've learned for me was that when I forgave, the level of emotional attachment is what was removed. When I heard my mom's name, I didn't cringe. When I heard other people's names, I didn't boil over and, oh, and I can't stand, I would never name my kids this and da-da-da-da-da, all these things. So when we forgive the past, we're remembering it for what it was so that it can be to God the glory. Now, why do I say that? Well, because, one, you're still standing, straight up. If, if your past hasn't killed you and you're watching with me today, then, then guess what? You're still standing, which means you have a purpose, which means the quicker that you recognize that your past is not your future, the quicker you can get to the place of doing more for God because your future is what we're walking toward. Nobody walks forward to go backward. Think about that. Do you walk forward to end up backward? I sure don't, but I walk backward to go backward. Or I can turn around and walk back and walk the other direction. But if I'm going forward, looking to my future, as we know in Jeremiah 29, 11, that there's a future for you, plans to uh, not harm you, but plans for hope and a future, then if this is the case, I'm not going to be looking back. And I'm certainly not going to want to go back to a time that didn't provide fruit. So your, your past may be great. You may have been the star quarterback. You may have been the best golfer at school. You may have been the, this cute little cheerleader. You may have had everything. But you know what? It still is in the past. And trying to go back and relive what you did 20 or 30 years ago is stealing from your future when you have more things to do in your future. Now, turn with me to the right to, to um, Psalm 3737. And look at this. If we want to remember the past for what it is, check this out. Consider the blameless. Observe the upright. There is a future for the man of peace. Now, this is an interesting thing about leaving the past, is that the blameless and observe, observe the upright. There's a future for the man of peace. So those that are moving toward their future are progressing. If you are not moving toward your future, then where are you going? Some people are going nowhere. And some people don't even know that they're going, not going anywhere. So I ask you today, where is it that you're going? Where do you want to go? Do you realize that God is as big or as small as you make him out to be? And for me, for many years, I made him very small. He's like that big. Because I didn't know that, that there were so many blessings in his word. And I didn't know that there were so many that were for me because of my past. My past hindered me, and in more ways than I have time for, and in, in more ways that are really relevant for right now. But the man of peace is moving. Look at this. There is a future for the man of peace, which would make sense, because if you're living in your past, trying to recreate your past, what are you creating? Something that is false that you can't take with you that isn't even who you are today. And that is, we may, all have, we may have all have been maybe at one point a size zero or size two or whatever size that we ever were and trying to say, oh, those are the glory days. Why not make today your glory day? Why not give God the glory and say, you know what, I'm just going to be so thankful that I'm healthy instead of trying to be a size that you can't be because society always changes the size of the pants so where it's too confusing to figure it out anyway. But you see, there is peace going forward. And that's the thing that, that I want you to recognize is when we lay down our past, it's gone. It has no more power or control over us. Does it say that, that it serves no purpose? No. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that the influences and the things of the past are not your future. They just aren't. So maybe your future was fabulous. You know what? Make your, make, or your past was fabulous. Make your future even more fabulous. Why relish in what was then when you can have what is now and what is to come? Because God is a good God and his promises are yes and amen and they stand for every single one of us. So why not remove the limitations of thinking in the past and say today's the day that my life is going to grow bigger because I'm going to think bigger things of a bigger God that I serve. And I repent that I thought so small of you, God, when look at what you've created and that's that. <laughs> 
So you see how it all starts right up here and how we can get so twisted. And sometimes I catch myself when I look back. You know, I used to do these things. I, 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 I used to. I used to. And then I think, why can't I? Well, I can, but why am I not? Well, that's, then that's a whole other question. So the question for you today is how ready are you to get rid of your past? How ready are you to recognize what it means to lay it down? And the final, final area that I want to get to today that I, that I think is very important is moving forward. And you know what? If you still have things hanging on to you, it's very hard to go forward. If you have people from your past that are hindering you, it's hard to go forward. If you have all the memorabilia in your home of all the people and all the relationships and all the things that you did 20 years ago, you know what, where every time you see that, where does that take you to? It takes you to your past. Oh, I had, this is when I went on this ski trip, and this is when I went scuba diving here, and this is when I went this, and this is when I went this, with these people that aren't even in my life anymore, but that's what I'm going to stay focused on, the past. Facebook, all the other, some of the other social media, where does that keep you focused on? For a lot of people, the past. Oh, let's reconnect with, with the old people from, or not old people, but let's reconnect with, with people from the past. Oh, go back to those glory days. Why not build relationships with the people that are there in front of you to go forward? And I want to take you to Mark 20, there is no 25. It's Mark 11, 25. But I'm going to start in verse 22. Have faith in God, Jesus answered right there. That's a command. Have faith in God. He doesn't say to do so if you think about it. Have faith in God. That is a command. Not an option, but a command. I tell you the truth. If anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but believes what he says, will happen. Today is the day I'm going forward. I believe that. Do you believe it? Because if you believe it to come in agreement, guess what? It's going to happen. Here's the other thing. Mm, it will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, you, whatever you ask for in prayer, mm-hmm, <laughs> that you have received and it will be yours. Excellent. And when you pray, or when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him so that your Father in heaven may forgive your sins. So here's the thing. When you start praying, do you just pray, oh, Heavenly Father, oh, 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 Father God, who is this? Now, I'm not, I'm not trying to make light of any of this, but when you pray, you need to know to whom you are praying. Father, in the name of Jesus. Now think about it. It's like in a conversation. If I start talking, but I never address you, are you really listening? But the moment I say your name, then you listen. Why? Because there's power in the name. There is power in the name of Jesus. We know this. And so we start off our prayers. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you forgive me of my sins. Why? Because if you want any of your prayers answered, you need to have a clean slate. You see, it's hard to move forward without a clean slate. It's like the, when people say, well, God's not answering my prayers. Do you ask for forgiveness? Well, I don't know the last time was, and there's all this fuzz hanging around. I don't know when the last time I, I, I did. Well, then this is why prayers aren't being answered. And if, you, if your prayers aren't in alignment with his word, he's not obligated to answer your prayers. But so when we're looking at this in order to go forward, we need to forgive the past and every single component of it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I forgive my past. I forgive the people that hurt me. And God may have you go one by one and forgive every single event, every single person, whatever it is. But we lay it down so that way when, it doesn't say sometime in the future. It says, and when you stand praying, when you, st that's when, when you pray, right there, when you pray. If you hold anything against anyone, forgive him. So that right there tells us what it is that we need to be doing. We need to stand firm in faith, and we need to not doubt, but we need to stand in belief. And when we pray, we need to forgive. So that way, whatever comes after that, those prayers can be answered. But if we are, excuse me, not removing of all of the unforgiveness of the past, why is it that we would expect we can go into the future that he has for us? How could you? I mean, it wouldn't even, it would be similar to going and running, running in the mud race and then thinking that you can just slip into an evening gown or a tux and that it's going to fit right and look right and you're going to.